Hi everybody, and welcome back to Digital via Site Design. I'm Professor Adam Thiemann of the Annex Labs at Bar Ilan University, and today we're going to start something new, cahoots, that will help us go over the lecture material. So let's start with Lecture 1, Introduction, and ask a bunch of questions about what we learned in the lecture. Okay, let's start. We have a total of nine questions in this quiz. How on earth do we design such a thing? And what we see here is a simplistic view of a mobile phone. We have IO control, GUI, ADCs and DACs, GPS, uh, RF, communication control, power management, all these types of things. Do we use design abstraction, design automation, design reuse, or maybe it's all of the above? And my answer was all of the above. So let's go back and take a look at how we got there. So. As we saw in one of our um, slides, we have the solution to how to um, build a bridge or how to do anything very complex in an engineering type of design. We need to use design abstraction, design automation, and design reuse. Abstraction means that we separate our um, field into several different pieces where we have a different team or a different engineer or a different designer that designs that is an expert in their part. They know about the parts that are adjacent to it, but they actually have some inputs from the part below it and the outputs to the uh, part uh, above it. And that's how we have this interface between them and everyone communicates. But by div dividing and conquering, we can really do um, a good job on what we know how to do and let the other ones solve the other parts and give us the parts we need through these inputs and outputs. That's design abstraction. Design automation, of course, is building computers usually or some sort of an automation that will help us do things in an automatic type of way so we don't have to do things manually. Um, of course, when we're dealing with millions, billions, or whatever of transistors and of logic gates, we can't do it by hand anymore. And uh, a, a, an important concept is what we know, um, call design reuse, or usually we dis, uh, call it IP in this field. And that means that if somebody built a block, the block works. It's not our um, invention, it's not the important part, it's just one small part of our system. We'll usually try to get it from uh, a vendor who sells it to us or somebody else in our company that will give us um, the IP and we'll just use it. We'll, we'll probably verify it, but not at a really um, deep level. We'll let uh, them have done it, shown it on the chip or something like that, take it from them, buy it from them and so forth and integrate it into our chip instead of trying to build everything ourselves. So, let's go back to the next question. What does RTL stand for? Is it real-time logic? Maybe register transfer level, register toggling logic, or run to layout? Hmm, let's see. Sounds like we run to the layout. No, maybe that's not right. Uh, real-time logic? I don't think we were discussing some, anything about real-time. Register toggling logic, that sounds right. But no, I remember it was this weird register transfer. Okay, so again, going back to our um, slides over here, we saw that register transfer level is this cycle accurate model that's very close to the hardware implementation. And actually, it's just a very strange way of calling this thing that we do where we um, have our uh, registers that hold the state of our system. We have a bunch of logic that goes uh, after them, which is just Boolean logic, and then a bunch of registers that capture the next state. Um, we can actually kind of show that in this type of a way that we'll be seeing often throughout the course. So we have a bunch of registers over here. We have some sort of a logic and our state is basically the registers, whatever we have here, 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 and maybe some primary inputs to our design. Okay, then we have this logic. This is just a, some F of A, B, C, etc. Okay, and it goes into several other leg res registers. These can also be the same register, nobody said differently, which is the next state of our design. So that is register transfer logic because these registers are basically transferring to that those registers through some sort of a logic. And that's what RTL is called, or that is what synthesizable Verilog or synthesizable hardware description language is. So back to our next question, question number three. But what does RTL mean? And I think I may have answered that right now. Does it mean Verilog code? Does it mean Boolean algebra? Does it mean general purpose program, uh, programming? Or maybe it's synthesizable logic design. 
So as we said right now, it, it, it's kind of all of these things. When we talk about Verilov, we usually are talking about our kill, but that's not the actual um, name. That's not the actual meaning. We're talking about synthesizable RTL. It's just a subset of Verilog, which is synthesizable or a subset of, um, of uh, VHDL or System Verilog, etc. Um, Boolean algebra, yeah, we can do Boolean algebra within RTL. General purpose programming is for sure not that. That would be kind of a standard type of a, uh, uh, of, that would be a kind of a standard type of programming. Okay, so that brings us to our next question. Hey, I got it right. What is GTL? So, is GTL a net list of Boolean logic gates? Maybe it's a cool computer game where you shoot people. Hmm. That was GTA, okay. Um, RTL's little brother, that sounds like a good one. Or a general purpose program like C code. Well, uh, gate level is uh, just a net list of Boolean gates. So that's the gate level abstraction. And again, I guess we should go back to our slides over here that we saw before. And this is a gate le uh, level abstraction. When we take our RTL and we synthesize it, we actually get a list of these gates and the connectivity between them. And we call this type of a net list a gate level net list or the GTL abstraction. So let's go to our next question, see if I got it right. Oh, I'm in first place. What is a hard IP? A block that is hard to design. Oh yes it is. A block that is supplied as a layout, a block that is supplied as RTL, or a block that can be easily mig migrated across process nodes. Well, is it supplied as RTL, then why would it be a hard IP? Is it easily mi uh, migrated across process nodes? Hmm, I'm not sure about that. Actually, I think it's this. Whoops, I missed. How about that? But yes, it's a block that is supplied as layout. And because it's supplied as a layout, it, uh, it cannot be supplied in RTL. RTL needs to be synthesized. And it cannot easily be migra migrated across process node. It, it's actually a hard IP is supplied for a certain single process node. So. Again, let's go um, back to our, uh, our presentation over here. And we saw that there's this thing called IP integration, which is the basis of our, basically, our design reuse ab abstraction or, um, uh, or way to work. So we have hard IPs. H hard IPs are provided as pre-existing layouts with timing la uh, models, layout abstracts, behavioral models, and sometimes spice models and full layouts. And that's the standard delivery format for custom digital blocks such as RAMs, ROMs, PLS, and processors. On the other hand, soft IPs are just RTL code. And the nice thing about RTL code, it's easy to integrate it, to migrate it across process nodes. But we need to actually synthesize it and run timing on it and so forth. And, and, and it's kind of hard to verify in that way. So um, both of these are very common. Um, you, you get either soft IPs or hard IPs and integrate them into your design. So I guess I missed that question. I was too slow over there and I went down into third place. What does logic synthesis do? So we kind of mentioned that right now. It turns RTL into logic gates. That sounds right. Turns high level code into machine language. Mm, I think that's compilation. Validates the logic design of a device under test. Mm, provides a layout of standard cells on a chip. Well, I think I'm going to go with turns RTL into logic gates. And I'm correct again. So again, that is what um, synthesis is. It's turning RTL into logic gates. It's similar to compilation, but compilation is usually for ge you know general purpose programming languages where we turn high level code into machine language. That's compilation. Um, validates the logic of a device under test. Well, that's what we call verification, functional verification or otherwise, um, not synthesis. Okay, and provides layout of standard cells on a chip. That's what we do when we do placement or place and route. So um, the right one is turning RTL into logic gates. We have a slide about that too. So logic synthesis. Logic synthesis is when we take this type of a behavioral code, which we see over here, this Verilog code, and we turn it into a bunch of gates. So this whole um, bunch of lines is just one D flip-flop, as we can see. So that is logic synthesis. It gets um, RTL files and a whole bunch of other things, and it outputs a gate-level netlist. Okay. So back to our Kahoot. And I went back up to second place. Cool. What has to be provided by the foundry? RTL, standard cells, design rules, or EDA tools? Hmm. Let's see. Um, RTL, I think we write by ourselves. We don't get it from the foundry. 
EDA tools, I think an EDA provider gives us that standard cell. Well, maybe I can buy that from any vendor, but design rules, that's from the founder. Okay, so that is the answer. RT, uh, actually, we like to use this kind of uh, um, an analogy to an author. We're, uh, as a fabulous company, in which we would often be working in as a designer, we are the authors, and the author is writing the RTL. So the RTL is the author. The foundry, on the other hand, is um, the, the printing press. The printing press has to tell us what the design rules are, like what the margins are at the um, edge of our page or something like that. Um, EDA tools, that's uh, like our... Um, word processor or something like that that we're using. So that's not provided by the Foundry, that's by an EDA provider, such as Cadence, Synopsys, Mentor Graphics, etc. And the standard cells. Well, the standard cells are often provided by the Foundry, but there are external vendors that provide standard cells. For example, Arm, um, which uh, bought a company called Artisan, which is one of the famous uh, standard cell providers. Synopsys also makes standard cells. So standard cells can be provided by a, an IP vendor and not necessarily by the Foundry. So when we talk about the backend flow, the backend flow, which is what we're going to be discussing for a lot of this course, is this part over here, this physical design. But it has three main players at the top. And what we asked about now is the foundry. The foundry has to provide the device models, the tech technology file, and the design rules. That's what the foundry has to provide. Um, the vendors, on the other hand, they can build standard cells based on uh, these guys over here. They can build a memory compiler to give us SRAM blocks. They can build an, I, uh, an IO library to give us the input-output circuits and different types of hard IPs that we, maybe we're going to buy from the vendors. Uh, at the front end, uh, on the other hand, we have you know our spec, our architecture, the RTL that we're going to build in, our verification that we're going to get. We also have all kinds of IPs that we'll buy from vendors in uh, as soft IPs, verification IPs, and so forth. So those are the three main players in the design, uh, in, the, in the front end design, I would say. Um, Going into the back end, um, we also need, obviously, the foundry and the standard cell definition to implement our chip. So back to our Kahoot. What is the correct order of the back end flow? Synthesis, floor plan, placement, CTS, routing, sign up. Floor plan, clocking synthesis, placement, synthesis, routing, sign off. Placement, synthesis, CTS, floor plan, routing, sign off. Sign off, synthesis, CTS, routing, placement. Hmm, how do we start over there? I think we'll go for this one. I hope I'm right. I didn't have much time to actually check, but yes. Okay, so let's go back to our slides and we'll see our whole backend flow. So our backend flow started with our RTL that our front end designers uh, designed and verified um, and SDC, which are the design constraints. And these go into the synthesizer um, along with the standard cells and macros and they synthesize this together into a gate level. So our first, our first um, step is synthesis. We then go through uh, ATPG or uh, scan insertion, which we're not going to be discussing in this course. And and we take our um, gate level net list that has scan in it and we go over to the placer. So then we do placement. What we have to do is first design our floor plan, our power grid and our special routing and give that as, uh, as inputs to our placer. When we um, finally we get a list of our uh, the coordinates of each of our standard cells and of course we have the gate level net list which shows the connectivity between them we bring that over to the clock tree synthesizer now that we have the um, placements of our flip-flops we know where all the clocked elements are in our design are and we can do our clock tree synthesis which is to build our like tree um, and our buffer tree that uh, brings the clock from the clock source to each of these clocked elements okay and um, now we have our design with the clock tree and we can go over to the routing stage where we connect all the signal pins finally we get a routed design and we do our different types of validations our physical validation such as DRC and LVS etc Okay, so I stayed put in second place. And question number nine, a hardish one. What is hardware emulation? Simulating your RTL and displaying the waveform, synthesizing your RTL to an FPGA and running simulation, mapping your design to a very strong machine and simulating, or taping out a test chip to make sure your system works before production. Well, I actually looked at the slides before and I know it's this guy. And um, 
this we, we could call it prototyping, and there are two types of prototyping. Um, prototyping, the first type is FPGA prototyping, where we actually take our design and we map it to an FPGA. So we synthesize the design to one or two mini FPGAs if it's a bigger chip, and this really helps us speed up testing. So usually we're going to be running verification on some sort of a, a, um, uh, of a general purpose machine, and it has to really go and run uh, you know, in a single threaded type of way each step uh, of modeling the gates and so forth and see what's going to be happening. And that takes a long time. But if we go and we synthesize things to an FPGA, then they become hardware and everything works in parallel. It becomes much, much, much faster. And we can go uh, with FPGA prototyping and test our design much faster. But the problem with FPGA prototyping are two things. First of all, FPGAs are limited in size, um, though nowadays we can get over that by tying together many, many FPGAs. Um, uh, another, another big problem is that we don't actually map to the standard cells themselves exactly how they're built, but we do it to FPGA um, types of primitives. So the way to get a more accurate uh, type of uh, debugging is to use hardware emulation. And there we take one of these big um, boxes uh, or more refrigerators here, which is just a set of mini, 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 mini uh, servers with lots of cores on them. And we can actually go and put a certain number of gates on each one of these cores. And with a really complex and uh, cool connectivity between them, we can map our whole design at gate level to one of these big servers and still run it um, at uh, high speed. So we can do things like booting Linux on such a machine. So that is how we uh, that is what we call hardware emulation versus FPGA prototyping. And just to see our Kahoot, um, let's see who won. So our virtual contestant named Nancy came out third. I stayed in second place, and the first place goes to our virtual contestant who was really smart. She was actually so I hope that helped you, and you're welcome to send me questions on